it doesn't matter. Again, Mr. Williams, I invite you to conversate with me directly. I don't do all this internet stuff. The problem is, is you're going after my family, you post my children, and then you mention my name. So you and I, we need to have a conversation. And yes, this is a forever problem. It's me, Darius Cooks, also known as your local scammer. You are, you know, you gay, grown up in Chicago. You just end up being with a tribe of people. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I, it might be different now, but when I was growing up, we were crews. We had people we hung with, right? Anyway, and I hung with people like, you remember Calvin, Lavelle, you know, those are people that I used to hang with back in the day, and you see what happened now especially with randomness of veil. We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? We ain't heard hide nor have him, have we? Come to think of it, let me not bring his name up because let me tell you something. He probably, child, he ready to go. Where's the expose? Where is the expose? So they don't know what's about to go on. You just attack them. You just attack them. Uh, what did I say? I said, you better do what I said to do. Did they think you're crazy? If they think you're crazy, they'll just walk away slowly like that. Uh, we drove all the way from Wilmington, North Carolina to get scammed by Darius Cooks. And boy, did he scam us good. We were so, so enthralled by everything. We are so impressed and I can't wait to get scammed again. Thank you, Darius Cooks, for an amazing, amazing experience. We talked about it all the way back to the hotel. Love you and hello to our table mates who were so amazing and friendly. Five, six, seven, eight. Why you gotta lie so much? You must wake up and just make up stuff. Cause I just do not understand why. Every time you talk, you tell a quick lie. <laughs> you and your lies gotta go. Because I'm tired of talking to Pinocchio. yo. Then you had a nerd to look folks in the eyes. Knowing that you telling them lies. You be telling them lies. I asked you about this. Did you lie about it? <laughs> I asked you about that. Did you lie about it? <laughs> Get them lies together. They all over the place. I bet Jesus came back. You a lie to his face. I 
that dog can grow. No, boo! Let's go! Stop telling all them lies, you know, but what? Let's go! Cause I don't believe nothing you say at this point. Cause all you do is lie, 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 All right, I'm back quicker than I thought, but um, I got another little clip to play that's um, going to give us a little more time because I know some people are uh, are going to be joining a little later because I end up moving this live up from uh, 840, no, 855. But anyway, let me know that you can hear me in the chat by typing either first scam, first scam or Darius Crooks Legion. First scam or Darius Crooks Legion to let me know that you can hear me. I forgot over here on Instagram. Um, because tonight I'm going to share with you guys. Remember, remember, oh my God, remember that I've been telling y'all for the longest that I felt like there was more, but I couldn't put my, uh, I didn't know for sure. I just knew about the first scam that I remember, which was uh, his payroll company scam. Well, Darius Crooks Legion himself tells us his first scams and they start when he was a baby. <laughs> oh, she's been evil a long time. She tells us uh, 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 tells us herself. So anyway, um thank you for letting me know you can hear me Francis, Alice, Nicole, Aunt May, RJ exquisitely his MJ, Donna, Chocolate, Tamika, Maddie's mom of Sabrina, Don, Delilah, uh, GR, uh, Sock Snub, Fims, and Patrice, I think. And um, everyone else who's letting me know that you can hear me. I greatly appreciate it. So we're going to start this episode as we do uh, all of them. Our first uh, video or clip of the, the live is one of your favorites, but I've done, I've added some stuff. So uh, take a minute, watch this, and uh, when I come back, we're going to get right into it. Just giving people a little more time to get in here. This, you know what? This is the thing. It don't come up no more. This is as far as it come up. I guess I didn't get the one with the extra long handle on this. It's fine. I, this one, I like the spin mark. You ain't got to touch it. I twisted the pole. This is as far as it go up. It only go to uh, 48. What's 48? Two, four, six, eight. That's four feet. This four feet tall. This about four feet. This about two feet. This two more feet. This tall as it go to 48. That's it. It's not meant for me. It's meant for Maria. I love this mop. Girl, it don't the fuck go up. Extendable telescope. 22 to 36 inches or 36 to 48. Bitch, you got two choices. 22 to 36 or 36 to 48. That's it. It don't go no fucking higher than that. Okay? Now, do you want the flow clean or not? What the fuck do the size of the mop got to do? Girl, twist. I have twisted. Do you... Girl, down, up. Down, up. Down, up. I'll talk to y'all later. You want to tell me how to live my life, how to run my life? No, keep doing what you're doing and let me do what I'm doing. And when I need your suggestion, I'll come and ask you. But you've not heard me ask you for a suggestion. So why are you offering? I can offer you one. Stop eating so much. Lose weight. Stop spending so much money. Learn how to save. Get your credit score up. Quit sleeping next to a man who don't fucking love you. Get some self-esteem. Get some self-encouragement. You see how a slippery slope this is? Do you see what slippery slope we go down when I never asked you for a suggestion? See how it feels? Not, not too good, huh? Not too good, right? Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole different ball game from this perspective, ain't it? <laughs> now I'm a cool guy. 
I'm cool. <laughs> but chill out. Shit. Chill out. And you know where we started? With people giving me suggestions on the ask. When people start giving you suggestions that you didn't ask, that's when, that's when it go crazy. You never asked. Never asked. Never asked. And then you get upset with me. If you would have not provided the suggestion, there wouldn't be a problem. This not on me. This on you. They don't be pushing me. And they'll not put they do not piss me off. What the hell did we just watch? <laughs> He's like, they don't be pushing me. They they don't even be pissing me off. What? He just went on a rant. This whole uh I, I'm what I'm gonna do is it's only a few more, but uh I guess I'll just we'll watch them together because I added some new ones into our um meltdown and rant um opening. <laughs> and every day we won't watch all of them, so I, I might as well just watch. Uh, let y'all see what we put together thus far. There are so many more. I told y'all there are so many more. So I'm just keep adding them as we go and then uh, let y'all see them. Because some of y'all don't watch them live and y'all don't get to see this level of toxicity and mental illness play out daily. Right. What are you doing on social media if you can't take it? The dog is bark. He barks all day long, y'all. Y'all see He barks that. all day. I, I really want to take a gun and shoot the shit out that dog and kill him. That's what I want to do, but... Jesus, the smacking and, snort and snorting. It's going to get worse, sis. <laughs> One second. It's always something with this man. I'm telling you about Jeremy, but it's always something with me. And go fix your hair, you ugly heifer. Your fucking mama, bitch. All right, sorry, y'all. Forgive me. God is good. Amen. But Darius, if he's already going through something mental, mental, why keep speaking on him in the way you are? Don't jump on me, but I don't see it being negative, but he may be feel mentally and can possibly push him over the edge. I don't give two fucks about that. The looks of it, you probably don't need to go to Uncle Raymond's either, child. You need to go to Bally's or LA Fitness, honey, or Planet Fitness, one of the three. It's a, sound like Uncle Remus and Three Kings, the last place your fat ass need to be, need to be somewhere. Girl doing crunches. Okay, that's about... That's about what your fit has me. <laughs> you want to go to Uncle Remus or Auntie Remus? You take your ass right down there to the health club and get on the elliptical because it's waiting on you. Somebody who has struggled with weight their entire life and had to go to the point of just getting on the table in order to get some level of control over and repeatedly get on the table has the nerve to talk about the weight of other people from a thumbnail at that, from a little avatar. And quick to call somebody else fat. Well, you keep talking about it along with posting the video. That's a great night to say our opinion. Oh, you can say your opinion, sis. You know I don't care about your opinion. It's like you don't care about mine. It that don't bother me. Yeah, your opinion and you stating it, that don't bother me. You say whatever you want to say. See, I know how to listen to what you got to say or read what you got to say and move on. Right? So I'm a Capricorn. I have that ability. So, yes, and I do uh, treat black women better. Dre Lockhart, girl, shut the fuck up. Uh, That's his response to somebody saying, treat black women uh, better. Shut the fuck up. What? After he just said, let's go back a little bit. It's just a total contradiction. As if they don't have memories. As if they got <laughs> memories like birds, like that. They can, they'll run right into a glass uh, two times in a row because they ain't even realize that they just hurt themselves the first time. You say whatever you want to say. See, I know how to listen to what you... You can say whatever you want to say. Not even five seconds later. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you got to say, or read what you got to say, and move on. Right? So I'm a Capricorn. I have that ability. So, yes, and I do uh, treat black women better. Dre Lockhart, girl, shut the fuck up. Or, or boy, or whoever you are. Honey, half of my staff uh, are black women. And half of my staff earns uh, well within the range in which they should earn. Okay? These are things you don't even know about me. Shut, quit listening to what you think you know. And 
What we do know is he does not have and never has had enough women on staff to even quote and say staff. Those are contracted uh, people who have businesses. You're a client to them. You are not their employer. There's a huge difference. And the reason he pays or was paying those particular women fairly, and I'm sure he paid them the least amount that he could that they would take, but it's because that was their rates. That was what they agreed to. When uh, Palma and the other baker from his uh, Carolina Pound Cake Trap Bakery, we watched that video last week. They literally said they were underpaid and they had to go to him to get a dollar raise. And he was mad because they talked to each other about it because he didn't want to give the other person a dollar raise. A Palma, who was the lead baker who was running and using her vehicle, her time, purchasing things and having to be reimbursed by him. And he didn't want to give her a dollar raise through the pandemic. And he was making tons of money in that business, grifting and scamming the, the flying monkey d hacks and didn't want to give those women a dollar more per hour. They were like, I can't survive off of this. She'd just be gaslighting. Shut up. Okay. Right. Was Don Smart saying Palmer was way underpaid. Wasn't Palmer making like $15 an hour or something? It was real low. It was, it was abysmal. And the reason she dealt with it was because it was during the pandemic. She had lost her, her previous full-time job because of the pandemic. People were desperate. And he took advantage of that. But he tells a story here of how he loves black women so much. Although we look at the opposite, because that's the reason why that person is commenting, treat black women better. Not because they see the greatness that comes from you towards black women. It's because they see all the hate, evil, and toxicity that comes from you. And then he comes up with a lie that half his uh, staff is female women, which is not true. They were contract uh, uh, business owners who he had that did business with him and were free to do what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. And that was based on their rates. Thank you so much, uh, Sock Snob Films. Uh, really appreciate you, friend. You said, just wow, I never watched him live only clips you've shown i don't know how his supporters accept this shameful that is this is all by design that is why i'm showing you guys what i'm showing you because a lot of people don't see this part this keep in mind these are all from his ig lies instagram lies well live is what they call it but i call it instagram lies in his case because all he does is lie like what we're watching And most people don't see, the majority of the people don't see this. So when they hear people, when he's talking about my hate group, blah, 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 blah. When he talks about that, people think that people are in fact just out of the blue picking on him because some somebody said they didn't get an order. No, it's way bigger than that. It's way bigger than that. And this is called exposing. Oh, wrong thing. Just shut up. I've been an advocate for black women. I got black women doing parts of my business, leading parts of my business, making more money than they would make if they was in corporate. Girl, shut your mouth. You don't even know what you're talking about. Shut up. All right? With them red flags. And change that pro. Hold on to him saying he advocates for black women because that's a lot of what we're going to talk about during this show. Let's let's see how much advocating we get through uh, with these segments. Profile picture. You're too old to have a cartoon as a profile picture. All right? You're too old for that. Put up your real picture. With your flat face. Okay? Let's see that. That red flag. Amen? Now, don't, now quit messing with me. And I get on here to have a good time. I don't get on here to fool around and have to cuss you out. All right? But if I will, I will put you between my legs and go get some noxema and clean them pores off your face. You understand me? That is what I will do. I will go out there and get some sea breeze. Now, mind you, for those of you who aren't quite clear of what we're watching, he's calling himself dragging the person who told him in the comment to treat black women better, they have an avatar up of a cartoon character. So how is he able to read this person about their skin when he's not even seeing them? Although, you know, just period, that's gross and uh, unnecessary for the statement that was made. 
but he's just making up ish. Get some sea breeze and some cotton swabs, all right? And I will become your esthetician for the day because clearly what you've been doing has not been working, all right? Now leave me alone. I come over here to play with you, all right? Now I will. I will wear you out. Like them craters on your face, all right? Now stop it. You, I'm giving you the, the, the warning, all right? If I was you. Great point, Sabrina. He advocates for black women, then proceeds to attack a black woman's looks. That he not even looking at on top of that. But you're right. That's the first thing he goes after with black women. I chill out. All right. I would stop. I would chill. Get on ice. You need some for your face. All right. They got that ice therapy to help you get rid of them bumps. All right. You need some clear skin. You too old to have a profile picture like that. You too old not to have good skin. All right. You and everybody else's business with red flags. The red flags is them craters on your face. Them are the red flags. All right. Let's put them in the comment section. D hags. Yeah, that's what um Lavelle call y'all. You keep saying Vale. I don't know Vale. I know Lavelle. So that is our meltdown and rants um segment thus far. We will continue to add clips as I run into them as I'm uh, you know, doing all these deep dives and stuff. I ran into so much stuff over the weekend, y'all. I was like, oh my God. Uh, I, that's why my shows weren't really ready because I ran into uh, so much more of his toxicity. I just realized, I don't think I brought in, uh, what is this? Oh, that's that. Okay, the other one I have to, ooh, I got to try to find it. I'm like, the main uh, thing I edited, where the hell did I put it? I forgot. Anyway, did you know? Oh, let me close this out. Thank you to the uh, out of the 120 of you who voted, the 85% of you who have shared and liked this video. If you have not as of yet, please hit that like button and share this video. We are on our road to 50,000 subscribers on YouTube and 10,000 subscribers on Facebook. So please show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing if you have not. As of yet, it is free to you, but it is invaluable to me and the growth of this channel and my motivation to come here <laughs> on days like yesterday and today where I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> I don't feel like going live. But then I'm motivated by um, our, our wonderful people like um, Sock Snob Films and uh, those of you who are like, Vale, I want to hear your perspective on it and the fact that I see the subscriber numbers ticking up. Those are the things that say, Vale, keep at it. Don't don't let them down. They looking forward to some internet and some evening uh, info and, and, and shenanigans at the same time. Um, but thank you to those of you who are showing your support and you show it without me even having to ask. I, I see you and uh, I speak your name. Uh, OK, so next poll question is, did you know that Darius Crooks. Has admitted to being a repeat thief as a child. Did you know that Darius Crooks himself shared that, yeah, Vail B has been talking about um, my first scam that he was aware of when I was, when he was, when Darius Crooks was 20 years old, I was aware that he created a fraudulent payroll. Well, at that time, I, ain't, at that time, I knew he created a payroll company and I was telling him are you sure it's a good idea to be creating a payroll company while you're working at a payroll company? And he was like, oh, I got this covered, blah, 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 this and that. And I'm like, oh, okay. It ain't gonna hurt me if nothing go down, but this seems very risky. He does it anyway. I'm watching him create the website. He doing whatever else he doing behind the scenes. I ain't had no close uh, interaction with the stuff. Next thing I know, fast forward, he's getting fired. <laughs> Why? Because he created the fake payroll company while working at a payroll company. Then I later, you know, realized the whole scam about that. Well, I told y'all on many occasions, that's the, what I know of. And I will only speak about what I know of. Y'all won't catch me over here just trying to add to this story because it doesn't need any seasoning. It don't need it. It's got it all. It's, it's a complete meal right here. From the rooter to the tutor, it is complete. You don't have to add nothing. It is a soap opera all by itself. So Darius Crooks says, it's time for me to get that story out. And the way he tells about his, this 
first scam um, is tells you a lot about how we got here. And I think he's so far gone. I think it's a Diddy kind of thing. I mean, I'm seeing some parallels. Like they get so bold, like a person that scams so much and they get away with so much and it gets so bold. Right. Uh, Sabrina, Sabrina Lloyd said, it doesn't need no razzle dazzle. I ain't got to add nothing to this. But they get so emboldened that they don't realize that they they creating a case against themselves and telling on themselves. So Darius Crooks took to his um, IG lies before the until the edibles kick in, which is the, the live stream that he does at night, where in this particular night he had a thousand dehivers, and some of them them with flying monkey behavior on there, and he gets so comfortable. That he decides to tell this story about his childhood with not a land lick of shame. First time I remember, I definitely remember stealing was I stole from this lady. Now there is, I did not alter this sound, y'all. <laughs> I don't know if it's from whoever, and I got it from Twitter. So thank you to the person on Twitter who, who posted this. I don't know if the sound got altered during their recording or what, but it does have a satanic tone to it. But that's who we watching. So uh, just know I didn't I didn't enhance this in any way. Yeah, I stole from the church. Um, then, OK, the first time I remember, I definitely remember stealing was I stole from this lady's purse, a teacher at school. I was on. Did I give it back? <laughs> I probably should go up there right now and give a donation. That's probably what I need to do. <laughs> it was this teacher. At school, and I used to go to, um, what school was this? It was Douglas. I guess I was in House B at Douglas. I was in House A. I, I forgot. But this was, this would have been like 1990. Okay, let me see. Hold on. If I graduated eighth grade in 95, it would have been like 1993 or something. Girl, so long. I can't remember shit. 30 years ago. Okay, that's how long ago this shit was, 30 years. So, um, I thought nobody even seen me steal that money out of her purse. I said $20 out of her purse. And I would take the money. I used to go to, like, um, I mean, with that 20 I went to the corner store. I got me some um, oatmeal cream pies. I got some vanilla ice cream. I got some of them toasted coconut donuts. I got me some tangy um, cheese shit. But I was fat. I was still in the heat. I was fat. We was poor. Right, so I remember I stole from the lady, the lady purse, and I had got caught. And I said, "Damn, how they catch me? Ain't nobody even seen me go in her purse." But they, they found each other. I had to go to the principal's office every day, and call my mama. I got my ass toe clean up. So that was the first time. The second time I remember stealing was at the church. The third time, this when I said I better stop this. I think I came to my senses after this. After the third time, we on the third time, y'all, that he's admitting to. Keep that in mind. When somebody's telling a story, and we're talking about a 42-year-old man, well, whatever age he was at this, 40-some-year-old man telling a story about when he was an adolescent. So you know there are some inaccuracies. You know there are some pieces that get left out. And he said the third time, I'm going to say uh, the poll question I just put out, do you believe that Darius Crooks only stole three times as a child? Only? And he tells the right, uh, Leola is saying at the church, yes, friend. And he's smiling about it, ain't no shame. And they ask him, Well, did you at least have you donated back to the church? Oh, <laughs> I probably should. Wow, wow, right, explore. He's been stealing all his all my life. I had to steal. That's what he that's his philosophy. Since a, he's a baby thief, it's in his blood. I And also, remember, you hear him say in this that his mama um, tore his tail up. So does that sound like a mama who don't care? Or does that now start to sound like a mama who had a kleptomaniac, mentally disturbed child for however many years, and by the time he got to be a teenager, she was like, I can't do this no more. And she probably cut him off. Maybe she did try to make him be a better person and he ain't like it. You know he don't like nobody to tell him nothing. We, we just watched a bunch of clips 
of where people can't even make a recommendation without getting snapped off. So can you mind? Could you imagine if his mama's saying, "Boy, you need to stop stealing. You're gonna end up in jail." F you. I'm running away. <laughs> He's proudly telling so, and we ain't done. We ain't done. That was the third time I said this is, you know, the third time I got caught. I said, no, I can't do this. It was like more like organized crime. I, I could have got a RICO charge. Listen, the third time, so we supposed to believe, okay, now we supposed to believe he stole twice as a child. Now he's telling you how elaborate his stealing was. And how comfortable, because you know when somebody steal, especially kids and stuff, they when they steal the first time, they ain't finna go hard. They go hard and steal like $20 and stuff when they didn't got comfortable with stealing. In the beginning, because I, I grew up with cousins and stuff who stole. We mo Most of y'all, put it in the chat, put a one in the chat if you had a family member or a close friend or something who was just a klepto at a young age. And you're like, why are you, why are you a thief? We know people like that. And they started out small with like, oh, somebody uh, somebody changed purse. They took 50 cent out of it. Then they go buy them some penny candy. Well, back in the day when we could do that. Then next time it's a dollar maybe. Then they, you know, graduate and maybe at a certain point they work their way up to, to, to the, to the $20. Then they go in grandma's draw and steal a, one of her chains and try to pawn it. Trust me, I got the, I, and again, I ain't been, I got people. <laughs> I got these stories I could tell. Next thing you know, they stealing, stealing their mama Kai at night or something. You know, they work their way up to that. Next thing you know, they behind grandma's house stripping a car. <laughs> if you're on Patreon, you already know. <laughs> She's a klepto. She ain't new to this. She been true to this. That's why she's so good at it now. She been doing it for 40 years. 40 years of thief. <laughs> Not 40 years of slave. 40 years of thief. That I need to change the thumbnail title. 40 years of thief. I said, no, I can't do this. It was like more like organized crime. I could have had a RICO charge. I could have had a RICO charge. Let me tell you what. I can't wait for y'all to hear. I'm sorry, y'all. This is I'm building it up because oh my God, when y'all hear this story, it's gonna so add up to everything we're watching today. And this is when he was a teenager. I didn't even know him yet. I said, no, I can't do this. It was like more like organized crime. I, I could have had a RICO charge. I could have had a RICO charge. Let me tell you what happened. I had this job, right? I told y'all this before. I had this job. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Craft. Okay. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab in North Riverside. I know, girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab in North Riverside. I know, girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery. What kids work at a, a nursery? Now, Frank's Nursery and Craft was a, um, it was a cross between a Michael's and a garden center. You got to be at least 15, and that's with a work permit in Illinois, because again, I know where he grew up and everything else. I know exactly where he was, where he worked at. I mean, just based on, I knew that area. He would have to at least be 15, and that was with a work permit. Otherwise, he had to be at least 16 to even work there. That's not a kid. That's a teenager. You got common sense by that time. You're in high school. You know right from wrong. You know what can get you arrested by the time you're 15, 16 years old. I heard, I know, girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab. It was in North River. Every child you know has been a thief because <laughs> that, that's every child has to go through the 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 thief uh, the rite of passage by being a thief at a retail level. On top of that, 
I mean, they started out stealing from their teachers and at church. And then they get finally get into the, the workforce and they steal from a retail place from corporate America. Every child, we all have this story. We all know about this. What? For kid, you kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab. It was in North Riverside, right? It was like, when you go into North Riverside, you gotta go past the Best Buy, and then on the right-hand side, before you go to the mall, there's the, um, there's Frank's Nursery and Crab, right? And I used to, um, I was on the cash register. This is what I used to do. So let's say you come, and you pay your, you come to the um, register, and you do your stuff, right? You be like, okay, I'm gonna um, cash out. You know, back then, the credit card, everything was separate. It wasn't the same. So what I used to do is if your bill was like $37.41, right, I would charge your credit card $41 and whatever the cent is and then take the $10 out of the grocery store. I mean, out the cash register, out the grocery store, Lord Jesus, out the cash register, right? So um, I would probably make about between like $80 and $100 doing that a day. Girl, today, till I get somebody down to the accounting department, started doing a reconciliation. I thought you just started scamming. You a whole professional. I know, child. Somebody down to the um the accounting department started saying, "Wait a minute, now, store number six seventy two look a little look a little funny on the <laughs> on the P and L." A day, yeah, a day, child. I ain't do it like every day. It would be like I probably do it like if I, I ain't work. I was a kid. I wasn't working every day. I was only working like specific days. So I would only do it like let's say if I work three days a week, I would do it like two days a week. I wouldn't do it the whole time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I did that. It's one of my fine. I'm not proud of it. I'm so proud of it. Oh God, we thank God for deliverance. Oh, he not proud of it. All I saw him do was laugh and chuckle throughout the whole thing, the entire story, smiling, cheesing, like I got away with it, like I still do it today and get away with it. It was my my old stumping grounds, my old training grounds. Now listen to his tactics with still it. Now this is the same person who has been accused current present day who is still being accused of credit card fraud people are saying this is in reviews yelp reviews and everything from his restaurants i even got a um a former employee hit me up telling me that they found they discovered the employees and the managers discovered that darius crooks was skimming off the credit cards of the patrons they were confused why people we're coming back saying or calling saying my credit card got charged twice, blah, blah, blah. And they and it was being blamed on the wait staff. Well, after reconciliation, they realized that Darius Crooks, this is when he owned the Greens and Gravy restaurant. Darius Crooks was the person taking that information and recharging those people's credit cards multiple times adding stuff to it it was darius crooks doing it the whole time and what story is she telling us now from back when she was 15 or 16 years old is that she was stealing from frank's nursery and craft in north riverside illinois so much so that she got arrested i mean not arrest she got she should have she's had a lot of grace she's had a lot of people letting her slide with these things because she got a good mouthpiece because she got a good uh, what appears to be a charismatic personality and that gets her that's almost like she ain't pretty she ain't attractive but she got a good mouthpiece and that you know sometimes pretty people get away with stuff she's been able to get away with stuff because she's charismatic so they like oh but this so this funny there this nice there this smart there is we gonna let you go but there is we so disappointed in you do better boy don't we you know we can have you arrested for this but we you just you like a, a, a nephew to me and the next thing you know she gone about her business gone on to create commit her next crime same now she literally 
telling them in that chat, they sitting there, oh, you was a you was a scammer from way back. Ha 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 ha. They laughing at it. They not understanding that she is literally laying out who she really is. And the fact that what people are saying today about her is still true. I got to quit saying her because everybody don't know. <laughs> Just rose off the tongue because she's a stunt queen from way back. One of them old stunt queens. Are you doing a reconciliation? Girl, to me, to like get somebody down to the thing is, and then take the $10. Everything was separate. It wasn't the same. So let's say you come and you pay your, you come to. So this is this is Darius Crooks explaining to us how he used to steal when he worked in retail at Frank's Nursery and Craft in North Riverside, Illinois. He's explaining how he started back then learning how to steal from people's credit cards. The same stuff he'd been accused of multiple times. Fresh Go. Remember, the Fresh Go scam was based on credit card scamming. He created a fake company online grocery store shopping company people shop for groceries like a peapod situation so they thought they pay their money they order 80 dollars worth of groceries they don't get none of it on top of that they get two charges on their credit cards for 80 dollars. hundreds of people y'all not three not five not ten not twenty not thirty not forty hundreds of people and she tells you how she started off and we just assuming because she would have had to be he would have had to be 15 or 16 working at this job. We assuming that this is where he learned how to do it. He probably learned from somebody else who was scamming at the job. You know, I worked in retail before. I knew people who did stuff. So let's say you come and you pay your you come to the um, register and you do your stuff. Right. You'd be like, OK, I'm a, um, cash out. You know, back then, the credit card, everything was separate. It wasn't the same. So what I used to do is if your bill was like $37.41, right, I would charge your credit card $41 and whatever the cent is, and then take the $10 out of the grocery store. I mean, out the cash register, out the grocery store, Lord Jesus, out the cash register, right? So um, I would probably make about between like $80 and $100 doing that a day. Good to me. To I get somebody down to the accounting department started doing a reconciliation. I thought you just started scamming. You a whole professional. I know, child. I thought you just started scamming. You a whole professional. They joking about it in the chat. This is how far gone he got them just from the parasocial and, uh, and indoctrination that he does by using this social media platform. That they don't even see right in their face, he's telling them who he is, and that everything people have been saying is true about the scamming. Somebody down to the um, the accounting department started saying, "Wait a minute, now store number six seventy two look a little look a little funny on the <laughs> on the P and L." <laughs> A day, yeah, a day, child. I ain't do it like every day. It would be like, was it? Uh -oh. never mind. He he just said he used to steal about a hundred dollars a day. Then he goes into well, not uh, when they like a day. He like no, it's not really a day. You know, I was a kid, so I ain't worked there every day. So you know, I'd be there two, three days a week, and I'd do it a day or two. Yeah, right. <laughs> you did it every day. You worked. <laughs> you if you was working part time as a teenager, you. Work two to three days out the week. I guarantee you was emptying that register out two to three times a week. Craziness, y'all. Uh, poll question we're closing out. Do you believe that Darius Crooks only stole three times as a child? 5% of y'all say yes. Hey, D Hivers. Hey, D Hags. Hey, um, people with flying monkey, um, um, flying monkey tendencies. And 94% uh, of y'all got good sense, uh, discernment, common sense, all that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that led us into, so like I told y'all, I mean, stuff is coming together as we keep going, even more stuff starts to come together. When I saw that, I was like, here you go. So I got the first part of the story. And then it started to make me remember that I had her, I'm wondering if he told me 
it's been so long though, y'all. It's like 20 years ago I met him. I'm like, did he tell me he used to steal? Like, cause all of a sudden it kind of sounded familiar a little bit. But I do know that other people accused uh, have told me that he stole from them, but it was so long ago that I just don't remember and I just didn't want to start saying stuff. But I was like, okay, all of a sudden this is making sense again. But again, none of this stuff was I hearing until after we were, you know, uh, not friends anymore. And he never stole from me. Money was never an issue. He never stole from me until the very end. But now, seeing who he was as a as a child makes you realize, okay, well that that that's on trend. That makes sense. That it was always in him and. For the longest, I was protected. And then at a certain point, uh, I wasn't protected anymore. And he felt that uh, it was time for me to get scammed. <laughs> and so he did it. Craziness. Craziness. But I also think that I would love to know that story. The, or, the, or, the story of the daddy. We can see how the daddy's dressed. Well, and I told y'all there's a full, a more full picture of the of the dad, and it really starts to make me wonder. And he looks very street, and like I told y'all, knuckles just scuffed up, ashy, all that, and he all dressed up. And you tell him he had a, he had a bar, a club, or something, and they're like, like I said, either he with them streets or he just walk around with his knuckles scraping, <laughs> one or the other. But it's got me thinking that that daddy was a street man and that some of that just got inherited. Even though he ain't, he only seen him, what do you say, three, four times in his life? Still. Apple don't fall far from the tree. And I don't know the story. And Lord knows, usually I find that usually everything comes to me at some point. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to get that piece of the story. Um, but yeah, so like I said, the story I did know about was the deluxe payroll scam. Uh, let me put this poll question in there. Have you heard me cover the de deluxe payroll scam, which was the fraudulent payroll company that Darius Crooks created? And I do believe, and this is just, you know, some of this is conjecture, but I do believe that Darius Crooks utilized that business and whatever he had access to in that business for years to cultivate other scams at points. Uh, like I said, he had that, when he got fired from the payroll company and he was unemployed, I don't know, about a month or two or whatever it was, and he moved in with me for two weeks and he said he was only gonna need two weeks and he'd get his own place, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I was like, ain't no way, you just got fired, you got, I think he was starting a job, I can't even remember. But he got that money so quick after being evicted. Because I'm like, if you had money like that, you would have never got evicted from your apartment. But the fact that he got that money so quick makes me say now, back then I wasn't thinking about it. But now makes me say he had to do some kind of scam to get a lump sum of money to be able to pull off, get him an apartment that quickly after being evicted. After being evicted. Let's see how many... Have you heard me cover the Darius Crooks Deluxe payroll scam before? 53% of you, yes. 47% of you have not. Uh, it is in my archive of videos uh, with the surviving Darius Crooks. It is literally probably episode two or three. So it, it'd be fairly easy to find. Uh, if you go to the beginning of my surviving Darius Crooks playlist, it's uh, video two, uh, about episode two or three, uh, where I really break it down. Um, and I was tonight, but there's no need. There's no need. <laughs> Not tonight. Anyway, moving on to Darius Crooks proclaiming that he protects black women. That's another lie on his IG lies. Um, I'm trying to. No, hold on. This is what I'm going to do first. We got a little reaction video. This is based on. Did he do this today? I think he did. Yes, today. Uh, let me pull it up. Where is it? Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. 
I had to remember where this was. I'm like, where the hell I found this? I almost forgot to pull it in completely. Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. That, then, that, then. Here we go. Unless you have seen a report that I haven't seen, how do you know? So earlier today, Darius Crooks was on his IG lies. He is in, um, uh, what do you call it place? He's in Japan right now. And um, he's been, you know, they're kind of the reverse of our hours. Um, and so he's been still keeping up with America time. <laughs> He got to go live. He got to go live, y'all. It's his money, for one. It's his money. So he got to go live, and he's uh, just been making sure to stay up late <laughs> to go live. Uh, and so he was on his IG lives, and he was giving his commentary on the P. Diddy situation. And I found it interesting because I saw a trend here that I've seen before with Darius Crooks always being a sympathizer to predators. And you don't really have to wonder why, because you can look back and see, the you know, how he got early. He's a baby scammer. He started way, way back when. And you get to see that it's in his blood to defend uh, scammers. I forgot to um, thank you, Maddie's mama, for the super sticker. I appreciate you uh, for that. Let me read y'all comments real quick because I forgot about this and then it'll be way too many probably in a minute. Oh, as far as the, the mop rant, uh, Leo, Leola says, uh, it amazes me that he thinks that's four feet. It's funny you say that because as I was editing, uh, adding more clips over the weekend, I actually paid attention and I guess I normally don't. And as I was looking at that, I was like, there's no way that's four feet because I, you know, being a contractor, I used to work with drywall a lot. And drywall is four feet. And when you turn it on the side and it came up to like past my waist. So I'm like, <laughs> that wasn't even coming to his waist. And he's six, four. He's an idiot. <laughs> he's a know-it-all. He's a know-it-all. So obviously they were trying to instruct him on how to use the mop properly and extend it further. I bet he's figured it out and he won't never tell them he did. Uh, Brittany is saying, oh, I remember this one um, man. Let one person say something he did. He don't like he goes off. Uh, it's sad. Then he goes in the personal attack uh, like he knows these people. Right. Exactly. Exactly. He's getting bolder and bolder. Uh, Maddie's mama says um, it's funny. Now, when I look back at some of his older, like the stuff I was doing over the weekend, Looking at his older like interviews and stuff, I can see him start to evolve to this. Uh, and it was it definitely was like as he acquired more money, he became more ignorant and toxic. And because he feels like, you know, no one can touch him. It's kind of like the P. Diddy thing. Um, Ladia is saying and his weight is still not under control. Absolutely. I mean, he's stuffing his mouth every five minutes. It's crazy. Uh, he's telling everybody who he is. Yeah. And they not seeing it. Right. Nicole um, Moreland is saying Rico charge. Who would even say that? <laughs> a Rico. That's what your current life looks like. But who would say at a as a teenager, they were so heavily involved in crime that they could have been facing Rico charges? That ain't no petty thief. Uh, North Riverside should have locked him up. Yeah, yeah. He got a lot of grace. Uh, church of all places, right, Don Smart? He stole in the church. It should have been the place, if he was so spiritual and religious, should have been the place where he felt like, no, God is watching me. I don't want I, I don't want to be punished. I don't want karma. I don't want God to, you know... Um, not bless me or whatever, whatever. All the things that the, us normal Christians, at least some Christian guilt. Where's your Christian guilt? How are you proclaiming to be so spiritual and led by God, but you can still in God's house? What? You learned at a very early age not to respect the house of God. So what makes us think you're going to respect his people? 
Brittany is saying, uh, just keep on telling everything. Right. He just sitting there telling the story, telling on himself. No, no guilt, no shame. <clears throat> Don is saying, uh, I always wonder what Miss Tillery thinks. You know, <sighs> she defends him still to this day. She thinks he does no wrong. Uh, it's kind of like um, we've all seen like people who are just really not good human beings, but then they mamas and they grandmothers like, leave my baby alone. She she got that kind of energy. Right. He's demonic. And every once in a while, you know, she's been on some live. I think I even got some of the footage where she's been. I think I do. Where she's been on lives um, trying to tell him, you know, don't come for people and let God handle them, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he you know, he don't listen to none of that. But she I think she's just completely wrapped up in his narrative and the fact that she's known him since she he was a kid. And again, you got to keep in mind, he protects certain people in his orbit from things. He, I was one of those people. So that's how I can also understand how some of those people who still are in that inner orbit with him may feel like that's not the Darius I know. They got to be lying. Because at the point, I would have been one of those people because that wasn't the Darius I knew. And then, thank God, I was uh, freed <laughs> and my eyes were wide open. Where is the fear of God? Right. Where is the fear of God? None. But he uses God and Christianity as a grift. So that means all he did was thievery. Yes. He's been on a tra his training ground. So this is him talking about P. Diddy. Uh, I tried to chop this up as much as possible. It was like a 30 minute. No, he was on for like 40 minutes. I was able to get it down to 24 minutes, but we gonna jump through here a little bit because then it was like parts I was about to chop out. But then I'm like, oh, but just in case I want to talk about that. So um, this is him from earlier today. And uh, you get to hear his perspective that starts to let you know that this man is truly not a good person in his soul. Unless you have seen a report that I haven't seen, how do you know that the raid from the Homeland Security was because P. Diddy was the person involved in sex trafficking or he was the one responsible for, for sex trafficking? Which one? How do you know? This is what we talked about earlier on live. And I want to be very clear with my questioning. Homeland Security don't show up unless they need to show up. We understand that. But how do you know? It is because. Uh-huh. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Pin comment. What does this say? The source would not specify whether Combs himself was the specific target citing the sensitive nature of the investigation. So if the source won't tell you, how you know? That's what we talked about earlier. How do you know? You don't. You don't know. Because them people with them Homeland Security jackets and them aviator sunglasses have not stood in front of that podium. You don't know. Who else would they be there for? We know it's for him. But my question for you is, is he solely responsible or is he a part? Now, part of the reason I'm sharing, not that I care about his opinion at all, <laughs> but um, part of um, um, me showing this is to show how patronizing he is to them. We all know. Now, we all, uh, the court of public opinion, the majority of, uh, I would say, if <laughs> a jury of uh, P. Diddy's peers, he'd be guilty in our eyes, and the majority of us. However, we all know that it has to go through the court of law. There's an investigation. We know that he is not arrested. He is not guilty as charged as of today. But we still are entitled to our opinions. 
they're giving their opinions of why he's guilty and all of that in the chat. This fool want to sit there and <clears throat> argue his point that, that where's the proof? And he hasn't been. And it's like, but it's not that kind of conversation. We're not in the court of law right now. But listen to how patronizing he is with them. Like he's more, he's the smartest person in the room. Or on the line. <laughs> Part of a group. That's what I'm asking. This is the specific question. Because you say it's for sex trafficking. Cool. Got it. Is Diddy solely responsible or is he a part of a group? He's responsible. Got it. How do you know? No, we know it's about Diddy. Is he a part of a group or is he responsible? And how do you know? I'm going to wait for you. I am going to say that. I'm going to wait for you to give me the answer. I'm going to wait for you to give me the answer. I'm going to wait for you to give me the answer. The specific answer. How? Okay, part of a group. How do you know? Part of a group. How do you know? How do you know? I had to speed it up because he literally took three minutes doing this and asking them, how do you know? How do you like they are children, y'all? Three whole minutes. I almost cut it out completely, but I wanted y'all to just get a feel by split. I sped it up. Three whole minutes. Craziness. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? That's all I'm asking. How do you know? I still ain't seen nobody answer. How do we know? I'm waiting. Because when I asked you if you were, if it was a part of a group or if it was him, you were very vocal. You, you were, it's a part of a group. It's him. You were very vocal in the comments. How do you know? Why aren't you as vocal? Why aren't you as vocal now as you were three minutes ago? And he loves to do that, but he's meanwhile just ignoring their comments. So he won't read their comment and he'll act like they weren't commenting. Apparently y'all seem to know. How do you know? That's my point. You don't know. It was three minutes of that. I sped it up for y'all. I'd be trying not to torture y'all too much. I know some of y'all don't like, like this part of it, but <laughs> I can't just tell you what everything that happened. I got to show you. You don't know. There has never, there has, they, these people have not done a press conference. These people have not said anything about what happened. They did not say anything about the investigation. There has not been any facts that have come forward. They have been extremely tight lipped about everything. Sure. They're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Absolutely. They're carrying the one. <laughs> Absolutely. But today, in this moment, right now, how do you know? Because nobody has said anything. It's not been reported. So if it's not been reported and a source can't be cited, how do you know? Now, I'm not saying the man is innocent. I'm not saying the man is guilty, but without the facts, how can you make a determination? Well, if they did a press conference, chances are they'd have some evidence, right? Chances are they'd have evidence that proves the point for the reason for doing it in the first place. We don't know what this is about. All we know is it's about sex trafficking. We don't know. No, we cannot move on. OK, that's the problem. What you trying to move on? I told you change management takes a year. So if people still. So somebody in the chat is like, can we move on? Because they've been tortured with that three minutes that I skipped through for y'all. And all this. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> they being tortured. They like, can we just move on? Good Lord. Jesus.
She get her panties up in a bunch and it's just, <laughs> she get on her little soapbox because she feeling all important and knowing that she can uh, feel like she commanding her little uh, internet space. She's ridiculous. Right. Uh, so ask you. Sanders are in change management. What? <laughs> I just some of this stuff I had to let go, y'all. I can't. I can't hang on every stupid thing she say. Give <laughs> me what time my restaurant opened, and they've been closed for five years. Having a conversation about logic is going to take us more than three minutes to get through. I get it. You're faster than everyone else. Good. Come back when we're done. But for those who need a little bit more time, let's allow them that right now. So, no, we cannot move on. We're having a full on conversation about what's going on currently in the news. OK, um, like I said, I unless you've seen something I ain't seen. OK, unless and it might be extremely detrimental. All I'm saying is what we, we don't know what happened. You don't know what happened. You don't even know how much. Cassie got paid on the settlement. How much did Cassie get? Let me know if you answer that question for me. Uh oh, I was trying to skip. Okay. Ah, the amount was sealed. The documents are sealed. Oh, they. You see how patronized he is talking to a group of primarily black women. We know the majority of them are in their 30s all the way up to their 60s, 70s. And he is talking to them like they are adolescents, five and seven year olds. I don't get it. Nobody could sit and talk to me like that online, on flow, on, on air, on sea, on nothing. Ever. And they support her. And defend them. He a good guy. Darius is so nice. Why y'all always messing with the good people? What? <laughs> Are. Aren't they? So how can you determine how much she got if, in fact, the documents are sealed? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You don't know. You know you don't know. If you don't know, why have you jumped to a conclusion if you don't know? That's all I'm saying. This is not a matter about how you feel about him. The facts are the facts. I remember having a conversation with my godmother when um, Trump was president and she, it was time for re-election and she was going to vote. And she said that um, something to the effect of Donald Trump should go to jail because he caused COVID. Hold on one second. I don't like Donald Trump like the next person that don't like Donald Trump. But I can't in good conscience sit here and listen to you tell me that Donald Trump caused COVID. Now, I can tell you that the missteps in leadership exacerbated the situation, but I can't go with you and say that the man caused COVID. Did he have intelligence? Did he have information? Did he have data that proved that he knew about the pandemic before the pandemic started? That has been proven. Yes, he did. Should he have done something? Which, depending on how a person, like he said, my my guy, mom, and he got to be talking about Miss Tillery. My guy, mama said something to the effect of uh, Trump caused uh, COVID. Well, d d keep in mind, she about close to 70 if she ain't 70. So her way of wording things may not be quite as articulate as he would prefer. But don't you think that's what she's saying? He caused COVID to become what it was, the pandemic, the way we experienced it. Not that he created the, the disease itself, idiot. But he got to be right. Right, uh, LL Cool Dre just said he's the king of semantics. Because that's semantics. But he making a whole argument to justify Trump <laughs> for semantics. And we don't know exactly how she said it because we're getting his version of it. And y'all always know 
his version of the story is always skewed in his favor. Three million times, but three million percent of the time. Something, yes, he didn't do it. Is that illegal? It is not. Is it unethical? Yes. Is being unethical a reason to go to jail? No. Key. Is being unethical a reason to go to jail? No. This is her philosophy. As long as it is not illegal to get me to go to jail, all bets are off. The sky's the limit. Even when she can go to jail because if she thinks she can get away with it because we're seeing that as well. But this is her philosophy. This don't just apply to her rhetoric about Trump or P. Diddy. Or Bill Cosby, we're going to get to that in a minute. Y'all know, oh, y'all know. <laughs> y'all know I know how to put thread a show together. Yes, he didn't do it. Is that illegal? It is not. Is it unethical? Yes. Is being unethical a reason to go to jail? No. Breaking the law is. Right? So again, I, I'm with you. I understand everything you're saying. We know he does, Darius Crooks does a ton of unethical things. He's like, but will it get me in jail? If not, oh well. And I feel like the man should be held accountable as well, right? The issue you have is if, in fact, you want to hold him accountable for what? Where are the facts? Oh, you saying amazed what that folks want Trump elected. Hope we don't have another. Well, you know, listen, yes, honey, I've seen what happened in Baltimore. It's on the news all over the world. Um, so here's the thing. I'm no, I'm no, I'm no Trump, um, supporter, right? At all. I'm a supporter of democracy, right? And in democracy, it is the voice of the people. Clearly, clearly there are people voicing that they want Trump to be president. This is the democratic process. You can't just choose democracy. Okay, I'm going to skip over some of this, but this is her breaking down, him breaking down, telling everyone what a uh, democracy looks like and what it, uh, how the electoral college uh, colleges actually decide, or college rather, decides uh, who is the president, et cetera. Like, you know, like everybody's idiots. Yeah, you're right. Yes, Lord help us. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you're right. Lord help us. You're right. Lord help us. But at the end of the day, let me block Love Jones. Here, you can take care. You had enough of you. Who else need to go with Love Jones? Oh, Rosterdam need to go too. Let's get rid of them. Let's block them. Let's not even remove them from the line. Auntie she I thought he got thick skin. And what it don't matter what people say. Uh they got they have their entitled to their opinions. But he's spending his time to now stop his li IG lies to block random people. Gary, be proud of me for that. Be proud of me for blocking. Normally I let y'all stay here. I don't even block, but you done got on my nerve this morning. Thank you, Sonia Charles. I don't know. I think you did another super sticker. But either way, thank you, uh, friend, for the super sticker. So I don't let you go. Yes, I know about the bridge in Baltimore, honey. Everybody know about the bridge in Baltimore. Child, it's on every news station, including international. They gone. I got rid of them, both of them. They gone. I know it was slick talk. They gone. They gone. You got rid of it. They gone. I got rid of them. Um. Yeah. Now, I just want us to keep the main thing the main thing. You feel me? Like, it's cool to not like something and it's cool to disagree. Let's just keep it factual. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm. it's cool with you having your opinion. We're about to get to the good part. It's, we're at the, a little past the halfway mark. So then we're going to wrap this up and move on to our next segment. It's getting good, though, y'all. And then I'm never going, you know, I ain't go. I mean, it's your opinion. Yeah, all from 7-Eleven, yeah. It's your opinion, so I don't need to, you know, dictate you. Oh yeah, vote local. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Um, yeah, I mean, you could, you could, you could think whatever you want to think. You can have your own opinion. I don't need to, you know, debate your opinion, and I never will do that, right? If you believe something or you have an opinion about something, 
then that's your opinion. That's your your absolute right. And, um, you know, I could either agree or disagree with your opinion based on what it is. Um, but when we talk about things like facts and what opinions are based off of, all I'm saying is let's just keep the facts the facts. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said, like, yeah, the fact is that um, Diddy's house, houses, got raided. That's not conjecture. That's not. It's so funny that y'all, these comments, y'all getting me on these uh, nurse lady vlogs is saying he's preparing his followers for when the feds kick his door in. Kiki uh, Gree is saying he's speaking up for himself before he goes to jail. Uh, and then, um, oh, this is just numbers. Zero nine is saying he talking about himself. As I was listening to this, I was like, I'm getting a vibe that this ain't about Diddy, that this is about you, <laughs> that you again trying to indoctrinate your followers. Keep listening, y'all. Keep listening. She always telling herself, um, a hypothesis that is a fact. His houses got raided. The exact reason why we don't know. It's a, it's a part of a sex trafficking. We understand that. But we don't know if they targeting him. We don't know if they're targeting the group. If he a part of somebody else, we don't know. So all I'm saying is let's just keep the facts. The facts. That's it. That's it. This Is it a fact? That's all I'm saying. That's it. And if it is a fact, like, I'm, you know, keep me honest. School me. You know, if you know it to be true, then okay. It could be true. And we cool with it being true, but just tell me how you know it's true. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm asking. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to sit up here and come up with a whole storyline, child, can it be based on some truth? Y'all sound like the people in that Darius, uh, that Darius Cook scam me group, child. I'm, I'm now see. The plot changed. It thickens. Now, all of a sudden, the focus is directly on Darius Crooks. Some of y'all saw this coming. I'm on the run, apparently. Okay, I'm on the run, apparently. I'm running away to a um, an ally country of the United States to get away. Okay. <laughs> it was, it's like, you know, where you get where you come up with this stuff from? Where do y'all get this information? Girl, what? I'm being arrested for scamming. Girl, get out my face. Yeah, I would be hot too. Because it's like, you know, you know, I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. It's a lot of people, a lot of young people too. That's it's unfortunate. It's a lot of young people that only hear part of a story and come up with a whole conclusion, right? I don't understand people who you only hear three things. You see what I'm saying? You only hear three things and now you come up with the whole conclusion on what the hell you think is going on. I fled to Bali, but I'm in Tokyo. Make it make sense. On a fucking airplane. Okay? On an airplane. Nonetheless, Girl, you can't get off no airplane once you get on. Girl, they know exactly where you at. Girl, if the fans was looking for me, girl, they know exactly where I'm at. And I use my credit card. Why is a person who's innocent and so thick-skinned and unbothered and all these people just crazy and his hate groups, why are he giving so much energy? Why does he literally talk about these exposing groups every single day, multiple times a day? Almost every single time he goes live, he mentions or makes some kind of comment about the exposing groups. Why do you care if it's not true? Why do you care if you're so um, so much better than all the people who are talking about you and exposing you? Why do you care? Why give it your time? Why give it your important energy? I don't know what Cat Williams said about him, if I could be honest with you, and don't really care, right? Because I think now you're taking hearsay from what somebody else said and trying to apply it to the situation when you can't. 
So I, I'm not going off of hearsay. I'm going off of the, the, the facts. The truth. Girl, they ran facial uh, recognition. You have to check in to clear. You got to check into the airline. They scan your face. And when you get to uh, Tokyo, when you get to Japan, they scan your fingerprints. They scan your fingers and they get your fingerprints. So you ain't got no, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, old people do it too. You're right. It ain't just young people. But it's a lot of young people. It's a lot of young people. I'll just be like, God, dog, man. Yeah, we need facts or convictions, right? We need no more allegations. Yeah, clear they do uh, do facial recognition. Although clear was closed when I checked into my flight, I went in late, and I guess TSA closed at seven o'clock. I normally don't take night night flights, so I didn't know. Uh, when the truth comes out, it'd be very interesting. But I mean, y'all have already formed an opinion, so you know. And I just thought this was. And and again, he's obviously not informed about the P. Diddy stuff because we've been reading court um, court documents and everything. This is not all just conjecture. Uh, it's not all based on that. But he's telling you, I don't know. I don't care. I don't, I don't get into all of that. It's got to go through the court of law for her. Well, I, it's kind of and even then it don't matter because I'm show y'all <laughs> in a minute. What I believe. I'm going to say this, and it's going to be a generalization. It will fit majority of you, not everybody. But what I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe is that when you hear a story about somebody, and and you can't convince me otherwise on what I'm getting ready to say. You cannot convince me otherwise. So you don't even try. Um, when you hear a story about somebody, and you have come to a conclusion, and the story does not have all the facts to it, but you've already come to your conclusion, that's premeditated. You didn't like the person to begin with, right? There was something about Diddy that you just didn't like, whether it was his success, whether it was his rise, whether you felt like he's responsible for Biggie, whatever the case is, in your heart of hearts, and if you examine yourself, you will understand what I'm saying. In your heart of hearts, you already have it against him. So this just adds fuel to the fire. So it can't be that uh, people have heard about Diddy and his predatory practices for decades. That can't be the reason you dislike him. It's got to be because of jealousy, because he's rich and, and wealthy and, and well-known. Can't be from all the other stuff. You're not going to think logically. You're not going to, to, to take a step back and, and analyze what the actual facts are. You've already formed a conclusion. You don't even know anything to be true. You don't even know if Cassie was framing him. You don't, you know he settled, but it, settling is no admission of the truth. And it is also not saying that you're innocent. We just don't have the facts, so we don't know, right? You've already nailed him to the cross. You've already crucified him and you've already buried him. Already. Without hearing the facts, you've already done it. And if you've done that, you've already had an issue against him. So it doesn't matter what he says or what he does. You already believe what you're going to believe. So what's the use in telling you anything differently or giving you any other information? Because you're not going to think about it logically. I will give you Two examples of what I know to be true. I showed up in St. Louis. I never even gave an opinion of what I thought of anything. And people already had an opinion. How do we get back to St. Louis? <laughs> how, how many we we need a counter on the St. Louis ticker, the dragon St. Louis. You've been dragging St. Louis. Are we going into week three? Is this week three? Because I feel like last week wasn't the first week. I feel like he went the week before last. Last week, he was still dragging St. Louis. And now we're in a new week and he's still talking about y'all. <laughs> y'all did. Congratulations, St. Louis. Y'all did y'all thing because y'all are living rent free in his head. <laughs> oh, y'all got to him. <laughs> and all y'all did was troll him back. No, he didn't have no, um, no E-class kind of situation. Nobody confronted him face to face. 
But all y'all let him have it on social media and she is hurt. Y'all got in her spirit. Her void spirit. Of what they thought I said when I hadn't even said nothing. You didn't like me to begin with. So it don't matter if I say uh, this is the best thing I've ever had or it's the worst thing I've ever had. Your opinion will not change. So why am I trying to convince you otherwise? I'm not getting ready to. Also, with the whole scamming situation, with me, right? The reason I know this to be true is because you had already nailed me to the cross before you ever even heard anything. You didn't like me to begin with. There was, you know, there was something about him I just didn't like. Yeah, I'm not common like you. Yeah, I figured out how to rise above my situation like you didn't do. Or I figured out how to turn all of my areas of opportunities into strengths. Or I figured out that I didn't want to live in poverty. I wanted to live in abundance and, you know, have an overflow life. That's what I decided. While you let something get in your way and prevent you from making it instead of acknowledging the fact that you stay behind because of some external factor that you have now internalized, you now don't take accountability and place the blame on me. And then now you're envious of me, which turned in, turns into, I just don't like you. When in actuality, it ain't me you don't like, it's you. And looking at me reminds you of the part of you that you don't like. He's sitting there thinking he need to say something. <laughs> He's a complete joke. <laughs> we all saw that. I've seen y'all coming. We're going to read the comments after this. Many of y'all seen this coming like, wait a minute. This all of a sudden ain't sounded like it's about P. Diddy. This sounded like it's about you. It sounded like you indoctrinating your, your flying monkey D-hags. So that <laughs> when it all comes crumbling down, you get to point at the uh, situation like people. See, they just after they just be after people who rich and famous and got some popularity. <laughs> Talking about people was calling him scammer without without knowing why. What? No, it was people sharing your crimes and scams like what you just shared for being a. a, a a little baby church thief. <laughs> it was those stories. And people was like, oh, you're a scammer. Now we know you was a baby scammer. Still not the church. And from your school teacher. Oh, my God. From your teacher? Oh, that's bold. You can't convince me otherwise. You cannot convince me. I don't care what chart you put in front of me. I don't care what analysis you give me. You can't convince me otherwise. That's why I don't take stock in the people who don't like me because I am a stark reminder of what you could have been. And the crazy thing is I now have a responsibility to carry that news with as much humility as I could muster up. But now get that. Here I am being everything that you wanted to be, but I can't throw that into your face. He, he can't throw it into nobody's face. Uh, ain't that what you do every... Then we just watch a whole montage of rants and meltdowns where you were throwing stuff in people's face and we're just watching you do it literally in the sentence that led up to you saying you can't throw it in people's face. It's, it's, who is he? What is happening in that brain? He needs to be studied. Like his brain needs to be studied. Stop me when I'm lying. Stop me when I'm lying. <laughs> Stop me when I'm telling a mistruth. You can't. Because I'm on point and I know it. I know it. Every time you look at me, it's a stark reminder of everything that you are not. Every time they talk about me, it's a stark reminder of everything they're not. And that's fine. I'm not going to change. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. If you haven't seen the last two or three years, it's going to get worse. That's it. That's okay. It's more content for us. <laughs> It's more, more uh, evening lives for us. 
Who else you know picking up just going to Tokyo just because? How long are you going to be in Bali for a month? Because he's the only one that can ever travel to Tokyo and, and take a month and travel somewhere. He's the only person. None of us know anybody else who has that capability. What you going to do next? Nothing. Because I don't have to. I can do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. That's the freedom and flexibility I work for. You see what I'm saying? That's the way I designed my life. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep on that, boy. That's going to require some self-reflection and some work. Don't want to get too deep on that, but you understand where I'm going. You get it. You definitely understand. Yeah, they mad. Let them stay mad. Oh, you know, I don't even, I don't even really think about it, if I could be honest with you. You know, girl, let them have it. Let them have it. Yes, I'm this, I'm that, I'm everything. Let them have it. Yep, that's exactly what I am. He's a thief. Yep. He's a crook. Yep. He steals. Yep. Love you too, DD. I know it's y'all middle of the day over there. Y'all need to go anywhere. Y'all should be at work, really. I know it's not normally our nighttime. So I realize that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go too. I'm going to go get me some rest because I do have a long day tomorrow. Well, not really a long day, but I got to be up at about 8 o'clock in the morning. This, you know what? This is the thing. I forgot. But this. Yeah, I started from the church. Um, then, okay. The first Hashtag never forget. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the next segment. I just want to play this one more good time. Yeah, I started from the church. Um, then, okay. The first time I remember, I definitely remember stealing was I stole from this lady's purse, a teacher at school. I was on, did I give it back? I probably should go up there right now and give a donation. That's probably what I need to do. It was this teacher at school, and I used to go to, um, what school was this? It was Douglas. I guess I was in House B at Douglas. I was in House A. I, I forgot. But this was, this would have been like 1990. Okay, let me see. Hold on. If I graduated eighth grade in 95, it would have been like 1990. Or something. Girl, that's so long ago. I can't remember shit. 30 years ago. Okay, that's how long ago this shit was. 30 years. So, um, I thought nobody even seen me steal that money out of her purse. I took $20 out of her purse. And I would take the money. I used to go to, like, um, I mean, with that 20, I went to the corner store. I got me some, um, oatmeal cream pies. I got some vanilla ice cream. I got some of them toasted coconut donuts. I got me some tangy, um, cheese shit. That was fat. I was still in the heat. Y'all was fat. We was poor, right? So I remember I stole from the lady, lady purse, and I had got caught. And I said, damn, how did he catch me? Ain't nobody even seen me go in her purse. But they, they found each other. I had to go to the principal's office every day. And call my mama. I got my ass toe clean up. So that was the first time. The second time I remember stealing was at the church. The third time, this when I said I better stop this. I think I came to my senses after this, after the third time. After the third time, I said. You know, another quick little revelation I had. If no one actually saw him steal out of the purse, but yet they ended up coming to him uh, and finding out it was him, would that possibly be, again, we, many of us have had these experiences in life, having someone that we know of, whether it's family member or friend or foe or whatever, something comes up missing and you know they were around and it's a group of y'all, it could be 50 of y'all and you're like, oh, Darius was here. Oh, Miss Miss Johnson missing her twenty dollars. Wasn't Darius just in here? Darius, <laughs> boy, where her money at? What you do with it? <laughs> Y'all know how that go. It's because people knew him as a klepto. He said his mama came up and whipped his tail. Everybody knew he was the thief. Oh, Darius, he got them sticky fingers. We knew people with sticky fingers. And anytime something came up missing, they was the first person we went to and checked first. And 99% of the time it was them. <laughs> that was crooks. That was crooks. This is, you know, the third time I got called, I said, no, I can't do this. It was like more like organized crime. I could have got a RICO charge. I could have had a RICO charge. Let me tell you what happened. I had this job, right? I told y'all this before. I had this job. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Craft. Okay? I 
used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab in North Riverside. I should have died. I know. Girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab in North Riverside. I should have died. I know. Girl, I was a kid. You kids do dumb shit because they kids. I used to work at Frank's Nursery and Crab. It was in North Riverside, right? It was like, when you go into North Riverside, you got to go past the Best Buy, and then on the right-hand side, before you go to the mall, there's the, um, there's Frank's Nursery and Crab, right? And I used to, um, I was on the cash register. Let me tell you what I used to do. So let's say you come, and you pay your, you come to the, um, register, and you do your stuff, right? You be like, okay, I'm gonna, um, cash out. You know, back then, the credit card, everything was separate. It wasn't the same. So what I used to do is if your bill was like $37.41, right, I would charge your credit card $41 and whatever the cent is and then take the $10 out of the grocery store. I mean, out the cash register. Out the grocery store, Lord Jesus. Out of the cash register, right? So, um. He slipped up and said the grocery store because you know he got some crimes in some grocery stores as well. That was a Freudian slip. Um, I would probably make about between like eighty and a hundred dollars doing that a day. Girl, today, to I get somebody down to the accounting department started doing a reconciliation. I thought you just started scamming. You a whole professional. I know, child. Somebody down to the um the accounting department started saying, "Wait a minute now, store number six seventy two look a little look a little funny on the <laughs> on the P and L." A day, yeah, a day, child. I ain't do it like every day. It would be like I probably do it like. If I, I ain't work, I was a kid. I wasn't working every day. I was only working like specific days. So I would only do it like, let's say if I work three days a week, I would do it like two days a week. I wouldn't do it the whole time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I did that. Lies. He only did it occasionally. Okay. As we move on, <laughs> let me get this in front of my face. As we move on to the next um, last segment of this evening, um, let me replay this so you recall that Darius Crooks is saying out of his own mouth that he does a lot for black women to protect black women, to promote black women, to look out for black women. He does a lot to the health club and get on the elliptical because it's waiting on you. Well, you keep talking about it along with posting the video. That's a great night to say our opinion. Oh, you can say your opinion, sis. You know I don't care about your opinion. It's like you don't care about mine. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, your opinion and you stating it, that don't bother me. You say whatever you want to say. See, I know how to listen to what you got to say or read what you got to say and move on, right? So I'm a Capricorn. I have that ability. So, yes, and I do uh, treat black women better. Dre Lockhart, girl, shut the fuck up. Or, or boy, or whoever you are. Honey, half of my staff uh, are black women, and half of my staff earns uh, well within the range in which they should earn, okay? These are things you don't even know about me. Shut, quit listening to what you think you know and shut up, okay? Just shut up. You know, another thing that just stuck out for me, it's, it's kind of funny. Again, I, I, I always like, I always look at this like I'm studying, um, Mental illness. <laughs> I am. But um, when this person says treat black women better, he didn't go to emotional ways to treat women better, what he does uh, to cultivate uh, better relationships with black women. He went to money. Girl, shut the F up. I pay the women around me more than they would make in corporate America. That ain't what they talking about, though. That's not what they talking about. Everything for her connects to money. And I saw some comments. Let's do the comments, and then I'm going to do the last segment. That way I don't forget. 
Uh, Explorer said he doesn't fear God. He fears <laughs> he fears a diet plan. I forgot. I forgot what <laughs> I forgot why I had started <laughs> until I got to the second sentence. Explorer says he doesn't fear God. He fears a diet plan. <laughs> um, Brittany is saying it's funny how he is so comfortable talking about other people and their troubles, but be extra quiet about his. He still hasn't talked about Crystal, like what happened to Crystal. This is where we get into the y'all be missing stuff and then y'all make assumptions based on something you missed. Darius Crooks will face stuff head on, but he's going to recreate the narrative. So he's not really quiet about stuff unless it's something that, like for instance, Fresh Go. He still won't talk about that because there's like so much evidence that he's been lying about that um, credit card scam business that he did in Chicago. Um, I just did the lunch machine. He ain't said nothing since I did the lunch machine story with all the receipts. So he'll be quiet about some things that when you come real heavy with the receipts. But in general, he'll talk about he'll he'll be straightforward and then recreate his narrative about uh, whatever. Same thing with uh, Crystal. He has talked about Crystal. You've just been missing it, friend. You've been missing it. He's talked about Crystal. Crystal's back around. I don't think she's around in the way she used to be, um, but they went out to dinner a couple weeks ago. People I said she was at the Kitchen Comeback, uh, Chantel's Justin Till Kitchen Comeback. Um, so she's around, but she ain't around. I don't think she, she may not know this yet. Y'all mark my words. She ain't in his good graces like she was once before. Their friendship will never be the same, and it will eventually completely end. That I guarantee you, just because I know the way that Darius Crooks works. He can't have, he can't do the gray. It's black and white for him, black and white. So, but Crystal is back around, um, and he has talked about, well, that they weren't friends for about four or five months. Well, they weren't talking for four or five months, but that has now, they're talking again. So, we've talked about it a little bit over here. Uh, Black Cherry is saying Darius is the type of dude who defends DV and SA. Let's hold on to that one. Let me skip that one for a minute. Um, Don Smart is saying he's on live. Don't he need to go explore Japan? Yes. He, well, he said he, he got there early for his, I just saw that cause he, he was just live a little earlier. A little bit before I did the first live with us. Um, but he said that he was there to get adjusted to the time change a couple days early, and he's been going to 7-Eleven incessantly. He's bought out 7-Eleven. <laughs> Every time he get on, he's got 7-Eleven snacks he's, he's going through, tons of them. Um, Jacqueline is saying, uh, bless you for reviewing this hot mess for us. He gets um, He's getting on my nerves. Yes, this is not easy. So please hit that like button if you have not. I think some people don't understand that this is truly work for me and it's not pleasurable either. Uh, it's, and it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, my God, it's a lot. So please hit that like button to show your appreciation. We got 219 likes and a currently uh, 305 viewers. So if you haven't as of yet, please hit that like button. Um, it is free for you, but it is invaluable for me. And we're also on our road to 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube and 10,000 over there on the Facebooks. Uh, so please help me reach that goal. Greatly appreciate it in advance. Uh, I'm a Capricorn. He's on the evil side. Yes, Leola. I know some Capricorns. I don't know any as devilish as he is. I know Capricorns there. They tend to be business minded. Um, they can be know-it-alls. I know one who's a very much so to know-it-all um, besides Darius Crooks. And, um, but yeah, business minded, but I know, uh, I've had some really nice Capricorns in my life too. Um, Darius Crooks is, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a mental case. That's, uh, that's more of it. He likes to blame it on being a Capricorn, but he's just a mental case. <laughs> that's really what it is. Uh, Delilah is saying, uh, the bridge was so close to where I lived. Um, and I used used it all the time and he just brushed it off. People were on the bridge. Yes, he brushed off the whole uh, key bridge in Baltimore. Like, girl, everybody know about that. That's uh, uh, international news. Moving on. <laughs> like, 
yeah, can you maybe say something about it? You know, condolences for the people who are lost. We know that they're, at least the last time I checked, because I was going to do the story earlier, uh, there were still, what, six people missing, six or seven people missing, and they were the construction workers who were on the bridge. I don't know. They said cars were in there, too. Whether it's, well, those are the construction workers' cars. Anyway, we're going to cover it tomorrow. So I'm I'm more in tune with the story than he obviously is, but he doesn't care. Um, I don't know. It's it's all we see it. Uh, Alice is saying he should really see an ENT uh, ASAP. He claims that he does have an ENT specialist for his uh, sinus issues, that he's been medicated, that they've done this and done that. I don't know if they're recommending surgery and he just hasn't wanted to get it because he doesn't seem to be afraid of getting under the knife. He's had a couple mommy makeovers, so I'm not sure. But he claims that he has been seeing a specialist and they tried to, you know, prescription this and prescription that. And he claims that whatever like stuff that used to work for him doesn't anymore. But he claims whatever he was, I think, trying to hold new regimen or something. I don't know. But um, he does have an ENT, supposedly, allegedly per him. Um, I am you hear I think it is uh it's saying oh my god he's so predictable yes we <laughs> we all saw that uh that thing coming he doesn't understand LL Cool Dre is saying he doesn't understand how someone's reputation can precede them right it's, it's kind of like he's are they a criminal had they been convicted that it don't matter then you just hating them because <laughs> it's so ridiculous uh, Don Smart says, building himself up while putting others down. Typical Darius. Yep. That's really all he did at the end. Justify, tried to make gaslight and say, well, y'all just uh, heard I'm a scam and you just believing it with no proof. And uh, it's really the people just saying it because uh, I'm living a life they wish they could live. <laughs> it's like, girl, calm down. Calm down. Your life ain't that great. It really ain't. It's a life that none of us would want because... Uh, of all the scandal involved and your joke completely is it just me or does he sound pretend pretentious uh no it's not you uh, just you bestie g <laughs> it is, it's not just you <laughs> uh the juggling mom says st louis doesn't like him because he disrespects st louis we aren't thinking about him exactly he acts like st louis is just made up that he his first time there and they like oh my god we hate him not forgetting ignore the fact that he was there months earlier and acted a fool and was dragging restaurants and creating drama and chaos they supposed to forget all of that occurred the reason they didn't want you there the second time and the reason they drug you while you were there the second time can't be because of your behavior the first time you were there it's got to be on them because they don't think for themselves uh, they uh, want to blame everybody else. So they look slow. Like all these, just ridiculous. No accountability. Uh, Nurse Lady Vlar says, the fact that you steal from registers, churches, and pur pur uh, purses. <laughs> uh, church, and then your next one, churches, pur purses, and registers. I like that. <laughs> that could, might be my thumbnail title. <laughs> I think I'm going to update because I couldn't think of what to say. So I... It, I don't like to have too many letters up here, uh, too many words on the thumbnail, but that was all I could. I had too much on my brain. So I just threw up there. Darius Crooks admits to being a thief, but I, I kind of like the, the purses, churches, and registers. <laughs> I like that. Y'all so creative. Everybody's so creative. Okay. So last comment. Uh, Black Cherry says Darius is the type of dude who defends DV domestic and S.A., actual, and child A.B. This dude is deplorable. Yes, you are 100% correct, Black Cherry, and we got proof. Darius Crooks has been known and has been called by the groups that expose him over there on Twitter, hashtag Darius Crooks um, crew, also on um, Facebook, the um, Exposing Darius Crooks group. Then there's the other one. I don't know about that one yet. I don't know if I'm going to be mentioning that name. That's, that's a little shaky over there. 
I don't know what's happening over there. <laughs> anyway, Juice, uh, what? Oh, got to go on the screen. Darius Crooks has been called out. Remember, I told y'all a couple weeks ago, last week, I think it was, how Darius Crooks loves to twist the narrative of saying that people were saying that he um, abused women, um, uh, uh, graped women. And I said that nobody has ever said that he great women because he'd be like, they and they lying, talking about some, they talking about I'm, I great women. How I'm doing that when I'm gay? <laughs> I wish I could do the Tom Pop. I don't care enough to practice. <laughs> he talking about some, how they going to uh, be saying that I'm, I'm doing that? You see how they lie? Oh my God, they lie. That's her recreating the narrative. What people were saying was that he was abusive to black women, meaning emotionally and physically because he attacked his um, worker, un unpaid worker, um, Kiara, at I think it was the Greens and Gravy restaurant or Soul Crab, one of them in Atlanta, one of the restaurants. She came there. She had been working there for a, going on a month and had not received her any money. Not not one not nan check. She was upset. She came up there demanding her check. He comes there. She's telling him, "You need to give me my mother's check." He is then telling her, "You get out of here." Blah blah blah. This and that. He his claim is that he grabs her by her shoulder and tries to gently nudge her kind of out. Well, everybody else's um, report on the story is that, including Kiara, is that he physically attacked her and two of his patrons, D-Hivers, had to go over to break it up to get him off of the girl. And the police were called. And the police escorted him off the premises. That is why he started to get the reputation of also abusing Black women. Not just the emotional abuse that we watch, that I play for y'all constantly over here, but also that physical um, assault. On top of that, he is a grape apologist. He's a person, like Black Cherry says, the type of dude who defends DVSA and child AB. One of Darius's tweets that also has people saying um, this sort of thing about him and how he gained his reputation. This is a tweet from November 19 of 2014 from Darius Crook's Twitter account, which is now defunct. He closed it down because they did not let him breathe in on Twitter. Oh, they gave him the business because he ain't had as many followers. I think he had like 13 or 14,000 on Twitter. Oh, they didn't let him live. They didn't let him breathe. He got off Twitter. Like as soon as I got on, he got off. <laughs> Darius Crook's tweets. That's it. I must tell the truth. Bill Cosby great me too. Turning it into a joke. It's a joke. There's another one um, that I couldn't find it. Uh, you know, I have a ton of time. I'll find it eventually. Or somebody uh, DM me or something. Send it to me if you got it handy. There was also another um, tweet. I think it was a tweet that Darius Crooks, well, just say social media post. That Darius Crooks put out there saying um, he was somewhere observing a woman out at night. I think she was jogging. Darius Crooks says, this woman out here jogging at night. This is why y'all get great. So a woman outside at night deserves to get assaulted. That's how she feels about it. Again, Black Cherry, what you say again, friend? Darius is the type of dude who defends DVSA and child AB. He's deplorable. Yeah, spot on, spot on. That's not it. That's not it. There was also another conversation with Darius Crooks. This was December 11th of 2014 says, personally, I don't believe it. Nope, sure don't. This uh, person, Scott, says, at Darius Crooks, how many more women 
would have to come forward for you to believe Bill Cosby is a grapist. Darius Crooks responds, no, no, this is a year later. I'm sorry. These are like uh, just together for some reason. In November, now that was December of 2014, that first piece, where I'm saying he don't believe the women who come out about Bill Cosby. Wasn't it 40 some women, y'all? Wasn't it 40 some? 30 some, 40 some? Then in November of 2015, a whole year later almost, he says, Shonda is freaking genius. She wove this Bill Cosby grape story into a the show. She has major balls. So he pissed off at Shonda Rhimes for doing something with a storyline. I don't know what show this would have been. How dare she even use a storyline to educate people on what was happening? Four days later. Oh, this was a year late. I don't know how this, this is out of order. I should have read this and fixed this myself. Another time he says, this is November 19th of 2014. That's it. I must, oh, this is the one I read. I must tell the truth. Bill Cosby graped me too. Then we have lastly, this was another tweet. This is even earlier, y'all. And I don't know what a uh, previous piece of it is. But Darius Crooks, June 25th of 2012, replies to someone and says, I am R.L. Fox. Yep. And I want to grape you too. He sees nothing wrong with using the word. Oh, I forgot this one. Black Cherry was on it. Want to talk about DV Black Cherry? Here's another post from Darius Crooks. This is a tweet. This was in May, May 7th to 20. Now, mind y'all, this is the stuff we're able to get our hands on. <laughs> Imagine all the stuff we might have missed. Or might not just be again. He 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 got rid of his Twitter because that's where a lot of the evidence of this sort of behavior was. Y'all remember back in the day? Well, it still is today. But at one point, Twitter Twitter when it first came out was became the Wild West, and people just being just doing whatever. Then it got a little. They started restricting it, and then um, now Elon got his hands on it and it's garbage again. <laughs> This person, Mocha Light, says to Darius, good point. How are you not going to honor coupons, LOL? Uh, so this could have been this 20. You know, this would have been around the time of the Cupcake Gallery. This would have been the time of the Cupcake Gallery. So it might have something to do with that. Darius Crooks responds, but this person again says, good point. How are you not going to honor coupons, LOL? Darius Crooks responds, Mocha Light, I say, Ill her with a K or punch her in the face. LOL. Nah, don't do that. I'm just kidding. Kinda. Do you believe if he could get away with that sort of behavior? Like he already ruthless with his tongue. Imagine if he was also able to physically assault his, his, uh, dehivers and get away with it. I think he would do it. I think he would do it. Y'all seem a little speechless. <laughs> the chat slowed down. Oh, the, the chat really slowed down. I get it. It's heavy. I knew this stuff. I'm re I'm finally well, I think I've shared a couple of them before. But it 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 paired very well what we just watched from today. That that video footage we watched of him. Not the him being a, th a baby thief, <laughs> not the church's purchase purses and registers uh, clip, but the one of him talking about P. Diddy and mainly P. Diddy and then Trump stuff and being a sympathizer for P. Diddy. That was today. And I was like, I already know what her behavior is like. And I said, oh, yeah, this time to pull those receipts and let me show the people this ain't isolated. She's a predator and she sympathizes with other predators. 
She got some R. Kelly stuff out there too. I just, again, that was today. I had to really pull it up real quick. That's all I got for y'all. What the hell you want from me? What more do you want from me? I don't know what else to give y'all. I don't know what else to say. Read some comments. We're going to get on out of here. He's a sick individual. Yep. Brittany. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, well, well. I was sitting up watching last night on the replay. Uh, yeah, y'all. Oh, <laughs> you was watching the replay and then we happened to be live again. <laughs> yeah, we, we're a little late tonight. Uh, that was because I was dragging today. I was really dragging. Absolutely ridiculous. Right. That girl was talking about mop with a uh, right. The T is new to me and I'm fabric, fabric glass. Yeah, I'm. This is why I know that I have to share these things repeatedly, but I find new ways to share information that I've shared before. Like when I saw that today, I was like, oh, I know what I know what receipt to pull today. It's actually kind of scary. This is a man who loves women, promotes women, has a in his in what the way he'll say it, has a huge um black woman following Christians at that. And this is her behavior, his behavior. I gotta get better at saying his behavior. Aaron uh, M says, that's what I gather when I watched her on live today. She's a sympathizer. Yeah. I hope they get Russell Diddy and Crooks and Bali <laughs> and extradite them back to the States and uh, charge them out. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's no extradition from Bali. So we'll see. I mean, you know, God works in mysterious ways. I, I'm just trusting the process. I don't know. I trust God. I trust God. I trust uh, the process. I trust that, um, you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'm just doing what I know I am called to do, which is to continue to just expose what is out there, to put it out there like I just did. That is what I've been called to do. That is what I will continue to do. However it goes from there is not, um, that's not my charge. That's not what I've been assigned. Something is wrong with anyone who follows him. Yeah, some of them don't know this stuff, though, in their defense. Some of them don't know this. LL Cool Dre, to me, sums it up. He wants, uh, he loves women's money and their attention. Yeah, because he didn't get the attention from his mama, nor did he really get the money. Lord, one day those uh, hags will wake up shaking my hand. Ain't no way. Now, unfortunately, there'll still be some who will, like I've said before, they'll be putting money on his books. They'll be putting, he'll be locked up and they'll be putting money on his books and trying to figure out a way to uh, go there and get, uh, have Dinah Darius in the uh, the visitation area <laughs> of the jail. Darius, can you bring out some bologna and cheese with you <laughs> when we come see you? He got daddy and mommy issues for sure, for sure, for sure. All them watching right now. No. Well, hopefully they're learning something too if they're watching uh, Kiki. Hopefully. But that's all I have for y'all this evening. I thank all of you who have uh, lasted with me, who've been here for both our first and uh, this second live stream. We will be doing this again tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be on time and get that first live out <laughs> uh, around four or five. And then we'll do this at 715 versus uh, the 845 or whatever it was when we started. Um, but with that, please hit that like button. If you haven't, if you're watching a replay, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not as of yet. We are on our road to 50K finally because I'm trying to be consistent. So please um, reward my efforts by hitting that subscribe button if you have it as of yet. Uh, so with that, until next time, uh, thank you to my moderators on the front end. I know I saw Alice and uh, I see a lot of, oh, Don Smart and Donna and Marianne. No, I'm sorry. That was Marlena. I think I saw Marianne too. And anyone else I may be missing, uh, thank you so much for your support. And um, 
with that, I will send y'all out. I was trying to figure out what to send y'all out with. I'll send y'all out with whatever's going to end up playing uh, next. All right. Till tomorrow. Have a great night. Take care. Be blessed. Peace.